Ulysses by Alfred Lord Tennyson It little profits that an idle king by this still hearth among these barren crags, matched with an aged wife, I meet and dole unequal laws unto a savage race that hoard and sleep and feed and know not me. I cannot rest from travel. I will drink life to the lees. All times I have enjoyed greatly, have suffered greatly, both with those that loved me and alone on shore, and when through scudding drifts the rainy Hyades vexed the dim sea, I am become a name. For always roaming with a hungry heart, much have I seen and known, cities of men and manners, climates, councils, governments, myself not least, but honoured of them all, and drunk delight of battle with my peers, far on the ringing plains of windy Troy. I am a part of all that I have met, yet all experience is an arch where throw gleams that untravelled world, whose margin fades for ever and for ever when I move. How dull it is to pause, to make an end, to rust unburnished, not to shine in use, as though to breathe were life, life piled on life, were all too little, and of one to me little remains. But every hour is saved from that eternal silence, something more, a bringer of new things, and vile it were for some three sons to store and hoard myself and this grey spirit yearning in desire to follow knowledge like a sinking star beyond the utmost bound of human thought. This is my son, mine own Telemachus, to whom I leave the sceptre and the isle, well loved of me, discerning to fulfil this labour by slow prudence to make mild a rugged people, and throw soft degrees subdue them to the useful and the good. Most blameless is he, centred in the sphere of common duties, decent not to fail in offices of tenderness, and pay meet adoration to my household gods when I am gone. He works his work, I mine. There lies the port, the vessel puffs her sail, there gloom the dark, broad seas. My mariners, souls that have toiled and wrought and thought with me, that ever with a frolic welcome took the thunder and the sunshine, and opposed free hearts, free foreheads, you and I are old. Old age hath yet his honour and his toil. Death closes all, but something ere the end, some work of noble note may yet be done, not unbecoming men that strove with gods. The lights begin to twinkle from the rocks, the long day wanes, the slow moon climbs, the deep moans round with many voices. Come, my friends, tis not too late to seek a newer world. Push off, and sitting well in order, smite the sounding furrows, for my purpose holds to sail beyond the sunset and the baths of all the western stars until I die. It may be that the gulfs will wash us down. It may be we shall touch the happy isles and see the great Achilles whom we knew. Though much is taken, much abides, and though we are not now that strength which in old days moved earth and heaven, that which we are, we are, one equal temper of heroic hearts, made weak by time and fate, but strong in will, to strive, to seek, to find and not to yield. Written in 1833, this is a poem about wanderlust, set after the return of Odysseus to Ithaca. Odysseus and Ulysses are the same person, transliterated from Greek and Latin respectively. I will use Odysseus to refer to the character and Ulysses to refer to the poem. This piece urges the reader to travel, to explore, to seek novelty, Despite the physical limits of old age, he and the veteran mariners to whom he speaks are still strong in willpower. It follows the story of the Odyssey as laid down by Homer, which concludes with a prophecy that states Odysseus will embark on one final journey across the sea after slaying his wife's suitors and restoring his rightful place as king of Ithaca. This story hook is expanded upon by Dante in his Inferno, wherein Odysseus is represented as a tragic character, driven by the lust for exploration and novelty to leave his family behind on this last doomed voyage. This ideal stands against the conservative ideal of the finished man, settled forever in a single place. 
Tennyson's Odysseus is a rebel who rejects this vision of conformity in order to explore once again the unknown vistas across the tempestuous sea. He is contrasted with the lotus eaters, referred to in another of Tennyson's poems, who are characterised more like knuckle-dragging conformists, addicted to the saccharine comforts of a static idyll. Of course, there is another interpretation of Odysseus's departure. He is abdicating responsibility, literally, by abandoning the country he rules over and placing it in the hands of his son, Telemachus. Ulysses is set in unrhyming blank verse and adheres to iambic pentameter, the metrical scheme for which Shakespeare is most famous. This means that each line consists of ten syllables and each syllable pair stresses the second syllable, not the first. Iambic pentameter is strongly associated in English with dramatic rhetoric and sounds somewhat old school. Yet Tennyson disrupts this scheme on numerous occasions, resulting in a poem that does not flow with an easy patter, but instead reflects the grave dialectical and contradictory pondering of the old king in Ithaca. In addition, Tennyson makes use of enjambment, continuing the sentence started in one line through to the next without pausing at the end of the line, only to then finish the sentence partway through the next line. This device lends a fluid and slightly disorienting character to the poem.